Ghosts, goblins and ghouls beware, for the black cat is everywhere. Stalking quietly in the shadows, counting down the moments to the witching hour with each step. A distant shriek echoes through the cool night air. Something brushes past your leg and sends a shiver up your spine. Deep in the library of this haunted hilltop house, a candle burns late this evening. For he is seeking the answers to the questions that time forgot, and telling twisted tales of terror and mystification sure to keep you awake all night. Now, the clock strikes midnight, and here is Black Cat. Greetings, viewer, and welcome to Black Cat's Library. I am Black Cat. It's been a while since I've spoken to you so intimately. I'm glad to be back on YouTube, though. And I'm glad to be making videos again. I know you all wanted it, begged for it, and now I'm back. And for tonight's episode, I've selected a special story from my shelf of mysteries. Stonehenge. Take a look inside, shall we? Ah yes, here we are. The mysteries of Stonehenge have plagued humankind for hundreds of years. So let's start with what we know. Stonehenge, as we know it now, consists of 93 visible pieces of bluestone and a type of silicified sandstone called sarzen. Bluestone is more of a catch-all term for foreign rocks as opposed to a geological term. The sarzen came from local quarries in the chalk downs of southern England. The spotted dolerite bluestones were once thought to have come from the Priscilla Hills in Pembrokeshire, Wales, about 250 kilometers away. But a new study from Aberystwyth University, University College London, and the National Museum of Wales found that over half of the spotted dolerite was found at a different outcropping only several kilometers away from Stonehenge. How the stones were transported is just the first mystery of the many unknown things from Stonehenge's past. Originally, many people believed that the bluestone was floated down the coast on man-made vessels, but new evidence points to a quote-unquote ill-sorted assemblage of glacial erratics, end quote. So ice brought some of the bluestones to the area, and some of the stone was quarried nearby. Neolithic humans built Stonehenge in several phases over hundreds of years. At the time, it would have been considered an engineering marvel. Even by today's standards, it's impressive. Hmm. Looks like the area was thought to have been known for its healing qualities. As today, Many people back then undoubtedly flocked to Stonehenge as well, although the reason might have been quite different. It's thought that those in pain would make sort of a pilgrimage there to find some respite. This is evidenced by the human remains excavated in and around the site. Let's see if we can shed some light on the past by taking a look at what's buried beneath the surface. The Amesbury Archer is an early Bronze Age man discovered in 2002 near Stonehenge in Amesbury. In his grave, several artifacts were found, including five beaker funerary pots, three tiny copper knives, 16 barbed flint arrowheads, a kit of flint knapping and metalworking tools, and some borers tusks. On his forearm was a black stone wrist guard. A similar red wrist guard was by his knees. With the second wrist guard was a shale belt ring and a pair of gold hair ornaments. 
the earliest gold objects ever found in England. He was thought to have traveled to Stonehenge once for a knee injury, which most likely left him with a painful limp for the rest of his life. He eventually came back due to an abscessed tooth which was very infected and is most likely what killed him. Although he is called an archer now, it is believed that he was actually one of Britain's first metal workers. The body of a male skeleton was found nearby and is thought to be a relative of the Amesbury archer due to a rare fusing of the foot bones. There is also an archer of Stonehenge. This male was found in a ditch surrounding the site. This archer was also incorrectly identified as such because several arrowheads were found with the body. Upon closer inspection, the arrowheads were found within the bones, implying that not only was this person killed by the arrows, but was probably murdered by a single assailant from behind and at close range. The Boscombe Bowman describes an unusual mass grave containing the remains of seven individuals three adult males, a teenage boy, and three small children. Along with the remains, there were eight pots, five arrowheads, flint tools, scrapers and flakes, boar's tusks, and a bone toggle. In 2013, dozens of bodies were found just under and directly around Stonehenge. Some were men, but most were women. And just this year, 14 more women were found, along with 9 more men. This most likely means that the Neolithic people in this area were seen as equals, or at the very least, honored equally at death. Now I'd like to tell you the tale of a terrifying disappearance at Stonehenge. This could have happened to anyone, even you and your friends. You can never be too careful when visiting ancient monuments. The year is 1971. Trying to cash in on the last days of summer, a group of friends decided to go camping at Stonehenge. Little did they suspect that doing so would change their lives forever. Upon arrival, they set up a tent and began to settle in. They built a fire and sang songs, and anything else you may expect on a camping trip. Unfortunately for our campers, storm clouds were moving in. And around 2 a.m., a terrible thunderstorm hit. Lightning is said to have struck the bluestones several times, causing them to glow bright blue. So bright, that it caused onlookers to look away. Witnesses ran to the stones after hearing the screams of the campers, but were shocked to find nothing but their smoldering tent stakes and a doused campfire. The group of friends were never seen or heard from ever again. Were they vaporized into nothing? Maybe they were teleported into another dimension. Whatever the answer, one thing is for sure. We will likely never know the answer to this, or most of Stonehenge's many mysteries. Thank you for watching, clicking those ads and hitting that like button. It really helps out, and I really do appreciate it. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be doing videos, let alone videos with such an elaborate setup. So please, let me know what you think of the new flavor of my videos in the comments below, and I want to give a special thank you to Mr. Sinister for narrating my new intro. There's a link to his channel in the description below. Check out his velvety voiced videos and subscribe to him if you haven't already. If you liked this video, even as a guilty pleasure, please share it with your friends and family, and your friends' families, and their friends' families, and so on because I have a plethora of plans for future episodes. So come back to my library next Friday at midnight, and I'll share some more stories of suspense that may make you question what you thought you knew.